Skyrim's a great game, but unfortunately it's not so great for summoners. But luckily there's a whole heap of mods out there which will fix this. The first mod I'm going to check out is called Ordinator. Instead of covering all the mods in one video, I've decided to do one video per mod. That's going to allow me to cover each mod in greater detail. There's two approaches you can take with necromancy in this mod. The first approach is done using the Bone Collector perk. This involves creating very long lasting minions, almost permanent minions, using the bones of your dead humanoid enemies. The other approach is reanimation. That's where you take a dead humanoid corpse and you revive it and it stands up and it fights using the equipment it's currently got and whatever skills it possessed in life. Ordinator has perks that allow you to modify the equipment of the reanimated humanoid or to blow them up with fire magic which results in a huge explosion and kills or damages nearby enemies or you can zap them Frankenstein style with lightning magic to buff them. I'm not going to cover reanimation in this video, I'm just going to focus on the bone collector approach because that's what I enjoy playing and I obviously haven't tried reanimation because it doesn't interest me that much. So let's take a look at the conjuration tree and see what's different about it in Ordinator. The first talent is just your generic sort of general improvement of conjuration. It reduces the magicka cost for conjuration spells and makes them last 1% longer per level of conjuration. This is useful, but not so useful for the Bone Collector. This is because with the Bone Collector, you're crafting the minions instead of summoning them. Independent of both the Bone Collector path and the reanimation path, there's this nice little perk that's just off to the side here. It's called the Rat King. And basically, whenever you enter combat, three undead skeevers are spawned, and they fight for you and just they aren't the strongest minions, but they're pretty helpful, especially at lower levels. The Rat King can be toggled on and off, so if you ever get annoyed by it or don't want it anymore, you can just switch it back off. But I find it really useful, even at later levels. The only bad thing about them is they can spawn around you when you're in a tight tunnel and kind of box you in. But generally speaking, they're much more help than they are a hindrance. And now we come to the Bone Collector. What happens is, when you take this perk, whenever you kill a humanoid enemy, like a bandit or, or whatever, you can find human bones on their corpse, like skulls, rib cages, leg bones, stuff like that. When you find one of every kind of bone there is, to form like a complete set for a skeleton, you can take this to a bone altar. There's four bone altars, one in each hold, and they're marked on your map. When you activate the altar during the, the night time, with a complete set of bones in your inventory, you will craft a skeleton warrior. The skeleton warrior is as good as permanent. At low levels they last for several hours, and I'm talking real life hours, not in-game hours. And at higher levels they last for several days. So although technically they aren't permanent, their duration is so long that they're basically as good as permanent. Their strength and duration scale with your conjuration level. So the better you are at conjuration, the better your skeleton is going to be. When you craft a skeleton, you get a real bucket load of XP, usually enough to advance to the level. The skeletons you build can't be permanently defeated. Once they lose all their HP, they sort of kneel down for a while before getting back up and continuing the battle. I'm not much of a fan of this because it does make battles quite easy when you've got your skeletons constantly standing back up again after a few seconds and rejoining the fight. But with that said, it's not too easy either. The issue is just I've seen it handled better before. In Mysterious Bear's Epic Necromancy mod for Oblivion, which also allows you to craft minions using bones and skin and other materials, what happens when they die is that they properly die and their corpse will be lying on the floor. And if you want to get that minion back, what you need to do is approach it and spend bones and skin and whatever else to bring it back to life. I think if Ordinator did this too, it would be a better system because as it is now, you can kind of just run away or avoid enemies until your minions stand back up again and finish them off. Crafted skeletons don't count towards your summon limit. Instead, how many of them you can make is determined by your mana pool, once you've got the dead tide perk. 
With a Dead Tide perk, for every 50 points of Magicka that you have, you can have an extra skeleton. The skeletons can be commanded. For example, you can tell them to wait, which is pretty obvious. It just means that they stay where they are. What's not so obvious is the fight command and the follow command. Follow means that the minion will follow you and it will be passive. It's not going to attack anyone, even if it's being attacked itself, or even if they're attacking you. The fight means that the skeleton will follow and engage any enemies it comes across. With the Barrow Lord perk, you are able to command all your minions. For example, tell them all to wait, or tell them all to fight, all to follow, etc. The Barrow Lord perk also makes them take 25% less damage. The Reap and Sow perk increases the amount of bones you can get from corpses, and it also increases the duration of the skeletons. When you invest two points into it, it lets you get all the bones back from a skeleton once you destroy it. The next perk is the Skeleton Mage perk. Skeleton Mages are crafted the same way Skeleton Warriors are. When you activate the altar, it gives you a choice between a Skeleton Mage or a Skeleton Warrior. They're armed with a short sword and a hood. Their hood and eyes are the same colour as their element. So blue hood and blue eyes would indicate frost. Red hood and red eyes would indicate fire. There's a few different types of Skeleton Mages you can get. There's frost, fire, Poison, Shock, Drain Armor, and Stagger. With only one point invested into the perk, the type of mage you get is random, and with two points invested you can choose what type of mage gets created. I don't use mages very often because they've got a problem. They love to just throw their magic everywhere and it can hit you, it can hit your companion, and it can also hit your other skeleton minions. And what happens when it hits a skeleton minion or a companion? For some reason, the, the minion that gets hit decides it's going to be aggressive and start fighting with that skeleton mage. And so what happens is you just have a big brawl on top of whatever other enemies you're trying to kill. It's pretty annoying because they won't ever give up on trying to attack the skeleton mage that hit them. They'll beat the skeleton mage down until he's in the kneeling position, and then they'll stop being aggressive. But then as soon as that mage gets back up again, then it's on and they're back to fighting. So the only way to break this cycle that I know of is to walk up to your skeleton mage and destroy him. So whenever I've used skeleton mages, I've ended up having to basically destroy all of them due to this friendly fire issue. It's an unfortunate issue and it basically means that I'm not using any skeleton mages in my playthroughs. The next perk worth mentioning is the Kanja Alza perk. This is so, so useful. You get sick of having to go and trudge your ass off to rift and hills or wherever else to find an altar to summon your minions with. So it's really handy just to be able to make your own altar. It doesn't last too long, but it lasts long enough to get the job done. And if it expires, you can just make another one. The next perk that's really useful is the fire ritual perk. The fire ritual allows you to burn bones at an altar. And every time you burn bones, it will increase the strength of all your minions that you've got summoned already. The buff will last until the skeletons are destroyed. And what it does is it increases weapon damage by 15%, spell damage by 30% for mages, presumably, and health by 50 points. The effect stacks and stacks so you can keep burning more and more bones and make your skeletons incredibly overpowered. At level 90 conjuration, you can get the Puppet Master perk. What this does is it buffs your minions whenever you're doing an action. For example, if you're blocking, they're going to be taking 25% less damage. If you're attacking, they're going to be dealing 25% more attack damage. And if you're casting a spell, then their spells are going to be 25% more powerful. I don't use this really because I tend to just sit back and let my minions do all the fighting for me, so I reap no benefit from this perk. But it's handy if you're a more active kind of necromancer. Finally, at level 100 Conjuration, we're at the end of the Bone Collector tree. And what you get there is you get the King of Bones perk. What this perk does is it allows you to take direct control over a skeleton. Whenever you're controlling a skeleton, you become invulnerable. And you're able to command where the skeleton goes. You sort of take control of it in third person, and you can make it walk around. You cannot, however, command it to do any attacks 
if you click or anything, the skeleton won't respond. It's not like controlling your Skyrim character. It's more like you're just moving the skeleton to where you want it to be. And if it happens to be in range of an enemy, then it will swing at the enemy. What I like to do is take control over a skeleton and send it as deep as I can into the dungeon. In this way I can kind of safely explore the dungeon and see what's lurking down there before going down there myself. I can also draw aggro or do whatever else I feel like doing. While ever you're controlling a minion like this, you don't have to worry about your main character dying, because while ever you're controlling it, your main character is invincible. The effect also buffs your skeleton. It quadruples its damage and makes the skeleton take half damage. The effect lasts about 45 seconds. If you move the skeleton too far away, the effect will stop. So it's only useful for a certain range. I couldn't tell you what the range is, but it's pretty far. So the only thing left now is to give the mod a score. Has it got plentiful minions? It definitely does. With the Bone Collector you're only limited by how much mana you have, and you can get such a stupid amount of minions, like so many, the mod's going to let you have as many minions as you're prepared to deal with. Because once you get above three minions or four minions, they start getting really annoying. They're going to be blocking you, getting in your way, shoving you off ledges, stuff like that. So you can decide if you're going to have a big army of skeletons for conquering cities or out on the open plains, or if you're going to go for a small squad of skeletons that have been hardened using the fire ritual to make them individually very strong. I think three minions is a good amount, but you're not limited at all. What about useful minions? It definitely does have useful minions. The minions you're able to craft using the Bone Collector perk are going to be capable of doing all the fighting you, you want to do. The only problem is that variety suffers a little bit. Warrior skeletons are always going to be unarmored and they're always using low quality two-handed weapons. Variety of the mage skeletons is good, but the friendly fire and the infighting they cause make them mostly useless, unfortunately. Just my opinion but I don't use them. Are the minions permanent? Technically they're not permanent, but because the minions crafted using the Bone Collector last for literally days, it's as good as permanent. You don't feel like you're on a timer like in a lot of other games. So I'm going to say yes, they are permanent. What about squishiness? Is the caster squishy? Well, because it's Skyrim, the caster can be as squishy as you want him to be. The good news is that the minions are strong enough to let you be completely squishy and weak, not do any fighting yourself and let them handle everything. So that's good in my books. But this mod earns extra points with me, because it comes with a great mechanic that's more commonly found in mods and quite rarely found in games. The minions require components to be crafted with. I absolutely love this when games or mods do this because it really puts you in the sort of mindset of you're the necromancer, you're gathering the bones and the flesh and whatever else you need to sort of construct your minion and bring it back to life. It's a real like personal touch and I absolutely love it when mods do this so it gains extra points for me because of this. So I feel like this mod deserves an 8 out of 10 from me. It's a really fantastic mod. It makes you feel like a true and proper necromancer. My only criticisms of it would be is that I'd like to see more advanced crafting. For example, if I compare it back to Mysterious Bear's Epic Necromancy mod for Oblivion, in that mod you were able to make a minion, for example, a skeleton, and you could upgrade that minion in different ways. For example, you could build a skeleton, and you could choose a path of it. You could take it down the skeleton archer route, or down the skeleton warrior route and continue upgrading that same minion using um, bones and flesh and whatever else. And on this path of progression it would gain different kinds of equipment, different kinds of skills. In Ordinator the problem is, is that you've got the fire ritual which is fine, but it's just giving you a kind of like an almost boring improvement of your min on your minion. The minion gains some health, Deals a bit more damage, but that's it. It lacks the coolness of 
Okay, I made my beginner skeleton. He was a great little guy. He had an axe. He was naked. He wasn't too great in a fight. But I've kept him around. I've upgraded this skeleton now into a skeleton warrior. And eventually into an ancient skeleton. Which is, you know, like the big badass skeleton in the Mysterious Bears Epic Necromancy mod. There might be a better skeleton than that, but from what I can remember off the top of my head, that was one of the best skeletons. And that skeleton was able to summon his own skeleton. So he had a skeleton that was summoning a skeleton. And that ancient skeleton was also really well armored, super fast. And yeah, so I missed that same sort of progression with the minions that Mysterious Bear's Epic Necromancy mod offered, that Ordinator does not offer. So yeah, if, if Ordinator was to improve a few things, like the variety of the minions, like I mentioned, and also that problem with the infighting with the skeleton mages, then it could probably achieve a 9 out of 10, but as it stands it's a 8 out of 10. Very solid, great mod, comes highly recommended. And that's about all I've got to say about it.